Hey everyone, it's been a little while. Welcome back to my channel. On this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. So recently, I have been getting into this TV show called Vikings. I don't know if you guys ever seen it. Um, it's a really great show. I highly recommend it. And apparently, it's very historically accurate. It took me about a month to finish everything. It's a lot of episodes, but afterwards, I really couldn't stop thinking about it. I think this show did a really great job of immersing you inside of that culture, which we're not very familiar with. So, of course, because I couldn't stop thinking about it, I have to make something that's based on it. I am making a Viking female character. And in this tutorial, I kind of just want to show you what I have so far in terms of costume. Making this character is a bit of a long process and I will keep recording everything I do as I go and if I find anything that's really interesting or I think it could be helpful, I will make a video about it. So for this costume, I didn't want to design too much. Um, I'm not super familiar with the style, so I kind of just combined these two different costumes together. Um, one thing I realized about Viking costume, uh, at least in the show, is that uh, almost everything is made out of leather. There are quite a few different types of leather uh, on the costume, some a little bit softer and some uh, actually looks like armor. But in terms of material, it still looks like leather to me. And they have this very intricate design and construction of the leather costume, which I find extremely interesting and definitely something I really want to copy in my own costume. So obviously when it comes to modeling, the trickiest thing is how do I capture all those patterns and uh, uh, for this part of the leather, I see there's a lot of hole actually inside of the uh, cloth. So um, my first challenge is how, to, how do I actually model all those holes all over the place but at the same time still have uh, that piece of cloth in the right structure and right form. As I mentioned before, there is a hundred way to solve the same problem and I'm not a modeler by training so I'm sure professional modeler out there can come up with way better way of solving this problem but I'm gonna tell you how I solve this problem. So when I look at all those holes inside the clothes, they are kind of, they have a sort of a pattern to it. It's like every four, cause it's under a metal circle so every four hole I would treat it as one pattern so I actually model those little square piece of geometry with four holes in it and I'm going to place them on top of the cloth structure that I already have first I will turn that piece of cloth structure life so anything any other geometry that touches the surface is gonna stick onto the surface I will place all those square holes that I've modeled into position turn that piece of geometry life and I will snap it on top of it so those uh, little piece of a flat geometry before will start to conform to the cloth shape after they're sticking onto its place and have a general form that's the same as the piece of cloth, I will combine all the square geometry together, turn on quad draw so I can connect them and also draw extra geometry if I have to. So this is what it looks like after I finish drawing the entire geometry. It's a bit of a crazy line flow. Um, since all the patterns are not really going straight, they kind of go in like a curved shape up. I want to show you what the surface looks like with a very simple material assigned to it. It's definitely not perfect. Uh, the surface is a little wobbly. You can see a lot of uh, those modeled um, kind of a bump to it that doesn't look very natural. But since I know uh, this piece is gonna get really sculpted, I think I can fix that inside of ZBrush. Actually, in the meantime, I can just use the sculpting tool inside of Maya to fix it a little bit. I'm using the relaxed tool. I mentioned this in one of my other videos before that ever since I discovered the sculpting tool inside of Maya, I haven't needed to go into ZBrush too much for the basic modeling. It's extremely useful and convenient. I highly recommend it. I'm just going to nudge around this geometry a little bit so it looks a little bit better like a piece of cloth. After some cleaning up, this is what it looks like. I started to build metal um, kind of 
text and studs on top as well. By the way, for the side where we see the metal studs, how I uh, put those circles in place is exactly the same technique I just showed you how I make the holes in the front piece. Next thing I want to make is those little leather straps that seem to be used to connect all the metal circles together and also connect the main leather piece with the circle all together is where uh, all those holes are for. So I model maybe a couple variation of these straps, uh, not too many, because I know that after I put it into general position, I'm going to use the move tool, uh, sculpting tool actually, to move them into a better position. So once I move them with the sculpting tool, uh, every one of them is going to start to look a little bit different. And also, um, they are UV'd before I start duplicating them. This is what it looks like after the straps are finished. Currently everything is symmetrical. Um, that is something I have to break before I do the final version. I uh, just haven't got there yet. And also with this armor piece on the side, you see those little decoration on top. It's about the same logic. I kind of model two to three different kind of variation. I UV them and I start placing them according to the reference. After that, all the elements are ready, so I brought everything into ZBrush and started to subdivide them and started to sculpt on top. This is a very organic material, so there's a lot of bumps, dents, um, it's very weathered, so I plan to sculpt some scratches. Um, and also all the leathers, they kind of need to fit together a lot better. Like the stitches I model, they're supposed to be sinking into the surface. So I'm trying to pump up uh, what's around it and create a, a sense that the stitches is actually inside of the surface. For these little leather decorations, I need to sculpt some light wrinkle on them. Just in general, make everything a little bit more organic. And at the same time, they are very duplicated. So if I sculpt on every single one of them, they're gonna start to look a little bit different and have a little bit more variation. With a piece of clothing like this, there's a lot of different details and parts, so sculpting on all of them takes uh, quite a bit of time. But I think in the end, it will pay off. Everything will look a lot more organic because I hand sculpted on all of them. So this is what it looks like after a bit of a sculpting. Um, everything is still symmetrical in this image. I'm sort of uh, delaying breaking symmetry because I know that's going to be a lot of work and I'm not looking forward to it. But to make something that's very organic and realistic looking, that is the step I will have to take next. I'm not sure if I'm going to texture this right away after the sculpting. I'm also sculpting her face simultaneously. Um, but a texture video is definitely coming for this piece and there's going to be a face sculpting video for her and there's going to be tutorials about making wrinkles and skin pore coming. If you are curious about how everything is going to turn out, definitely stay tuned and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I hope you find something useful in this video and if you liked it, click the like button and I will see you in the next one.